Hello, Albert here from the Moto Academy. Today we're doing something a little different. Ryan has queued me up with a bunch of the internet's best videos. We're gonna watch them, we're gonna break them down. Yes, most of these are probably pretty funny, but maybe I can at least tell you guys what you're seeing and why it happened in the first place. Moving forward, we plan to do this with a lot of our subscribers' videos. So if you wanna be featured on the YouTube channel, go to club.themotoacademy.com, subscribe to the app, and you can send us all of your footage through there. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna dive right in. Oh, all right, well, we got a PW50 and we got X-Factor ramp straight to the face. Hang on, we gotta watch this back here. Problem number one, it's, I'm sure this is his dad's fault. The ramp, way too small of a ramp, coming in too hot for how small the ramp is. Sitting down, elbows down. He seeps, he seat bounces himself into oblivion. Can you believe that, Ryan? Good thing he has every single ounce of riding protective wear that he could have on, just straight to the face too, didn't put his hands out. Let's watch this through one more time here. Yeah, okay, so parents, if you want to teach your kid how not to endo straight to the face, all you have to do is tell them on the entry to the jump right here, stand up, easy fix. Although that is such a short and steep little ramp. What is that for, an RC car? I don't understand what that could be for. All right, and we're gonna rate this crash one to 10 while we're at it. I mean, unbelievable form. And then addresses the camera after the fact, pretty much everything you'd want to do in a crash. I'm gonna give that a 9-1. That's a good crash. Good for him. Never. Oh. Oh. Okay, hey, so many questions here. First of all, oh my God. It looked like he yanked when he came off the takeoff as if he was going to do something and then nothing happened. Okay. Cameraman Cam and myself were having a conversation, I think, just recently on when do you jump versus when don't you jump. This is absolutely a situation where you jump and you, you jump to two places. One, either you try to, oh man, I don't know. Right there, that's not a good situation. Oh, well, he just did everything wrong. I mean, okay, so what I would have done is maybe right here, I would have done just a better job of trying to push off the front of my bike and at least got my body onto that landing pad. I'm sure his bike cut out or something happened or his timing was just really, really off. But either way, isn't that pad supposed to be there in case that happens? Oh my God. I can't stop watching that. Well, hopefully he's okay. Cause that was not, that was not, that was not great. Probably such a slippery corner. Oh my God. Okay, so this is just a matter of, think think about how soft his suspension is riding the conditions he's riding. And then he hits just the equivalent to like a super cross style short and steep jump face that's just basically a crater or a, a kicker. Yeah, I mean, that, that, a bike like that with that suspension setup is never gonna handle that type of jump ever. I'm sure he didn't realize it was there or that it was that bad. This guy, whoever this is, is good. I mean, to have saved that, and then you can tell that he just continues on his way as if nothing happens. This guy's obviously good. Pretty much did what I did at Straight Rhythm. and just keeps on going, just twist the throttle. Solutions to this, how do you fix this? Go slower. You have to get into the pocket. I mean, either switch lines completely, or if there were no other alternative, you have to get into the pocket, allow the bike time to compress and to unload. And he, he just tried to get through there so quick, the bike just didn't have time and just pushed through, sent him into an endo. Good save, very good save. I'm gonna rate that a 7.9, 7.9. Maybe should have saw it coming, but good save. All right, diving into the next one here. The thumbnail, just are getting me. Okay, Jet, Jet showed me this clip. This is Levi Kitchen. This is Star Racing Team down in Georgia. It looks like he just tried to go in like a low line. Let's watch the very beginning here. Oh yeah, I mean, it looks like he basically almost cut the track and then came from the corner of the takeoff. So is that a false neutral or he just totally missed it? this probably wasn't false neutral. I think he just hit a really soft short spot in the takeoff. Probably, I mean, I would guess he's in second gear right uh -huh. here. Yeah, and it just sucked him in and spit him out really quick. And then, situation, do I jump, do I not? 
Uh, not that he had much time to jump, but you, in that situation, you really just had to get a. That's how you break a femur, right where I have a pause right here. I think overall he got pretty lucky. That probably didn't feel great, but then at least the bike looks like it doesn't land on him. But that's why we gotta. Uh, it happens. Same thing happens when we train at the dog pound. When we start going fast, we tend to take like cheater lines and you have to set something up there so you don't hit the cheetah line. Because in a race, that would have been a tough block on the takeoff. You wouldn't have been, been able to take off in that spot. I mean, that's a that's a big crash. I'm gonna rate that a, I'm gonna rate that an 8.5. .8 Just for the, the fact that he almost landed a front flip. Okay, diving in the next one. KTM. Oh my, that, okay, there was so much anticipation here. <laughs> I'm like, okay, he's in good shape. He's leaning definitely a bit too far forward with his upper body here. His foot's out really for no reason. Okay, I'll stop it right there. Too much bike. That's a 450, I can hear it. Looks like he was just trying to manhandle the bike right from the beginning of the corner. You could just kind of tell the way he's riding it, even right here. That's a lot of upper body being used. Really don't need your foot out in this corner for any reason. Uh, upper body phase the inside, just not great upper body stability in general. And then just, it goes from sand to a hard base right there. And it, when it drops to the hard base, you'd want to be completely vertical with your upper body instead of charging forward the way that he is. And you'd obviously want to be really delicate on the throttle as well. And he just lights it up, lights it up, lights it up. Best case scenario here is he would low side, which means he would just spin out and fall under the bike. But it caught, it, it, it pretty much caught it the worst time. Although, let, let's watch this in full speed again. Yeah, I mean, he landed on his side. The bike didn't chase him down. I always kind of like judge these crashes based on, okay, and I, I do this with my students, and I think they think that I'm crazy. And I'm like, oh, you got lucky in that one. It didn't look too bad. And they're like, what? What do you mean? I just did three front flips, and my bike just did, had $5,000 worth of damage. I base it on, like, how his body hits the ground. So when you watch when he gets spat off, there's a few things that could happen. One, you can land on your head. Two, you can land on your head at a weird angle, which is no bueno. And three, the, the big factor is, is my bike going to chase me down and hit me or not? So the bike didn't chase him down and he landed on his side. So for that, I give it a 9.1. To the, moving on to the next one, 157 on Cowie. Is that Darian Sanai? Don't know how to say his name. Sorry, Darian. No, it's definitely not. This is a C-class. Oh. Wow, straight. Is this, pro, are these pros? Okay, let's watch this again. Well, first of all, a horrible start by everybody on that line. <laughs> six, six, one, eight. Couldn't have gone any harder right once he got out of the gate. And poor other guy here didn't even really have anywhere. I mean, he. All right, let's watch this right out of the gate one more time. Okay, gate drops position. How are we looking? Five two nine feet loose sitting way too far forward you could just tell he's trying to keep his head down but he can't really because he's sitting too far forward 157 feet are a bit tighter sitting further back so he can get his head lower not bad five six one eight five one eight whatever that guy is uh he's already got one foot up one foot down guaranteed that's why he went to the side so not great gate drops mm. i mean not, not great Okay, 529 just chops the throttle, lets it go back down. This is so interesting to pause it. Like, <laughs> this guy. Oh, okay, so he cut over right as 529 got whiskey throttle and did a wheelie. That's unbelievable. Okay, did he get lucky? Well, he didn't get run over. Literally missed by a centimeter from the foot peg. Now, he took it straight to the face, so not ideal. But I'm sorry, I have to keep watching these over so many times. He he didn't get run over. He didn't like dab his leg into the ground, which definitely that's how you could do an ACL pretty easily. I'm gonna give it. We're gonna give it a, a eight six. 
to be quite honest, I don't know whose fault that was entirely. It was kind of both of their faults. Because 529 Whiskey Throttle, the other guy def just definitely cut over, but it didn't look like any of it was intentional. All right, diving into the next one here. This looks like a makeshift arena cross. Oh, ADAC. This is a, I think this is a series in Germany. I've raced this before. Oh, oh, okay. So good use of the, the jump. So right here, he's like, holy crap, I'm jumping into the back of this dude. There's no way I'm saving it because it's going to take my front tire out right from underneath me. So let's jump away from the bike. Uh, now, definitely didn't roll out of that nicely. I mean, he just went straight to his side. I would have probably done a nice little roll. Wow. Um, broken bones. Yeah, maybe some ribs. And the, the, the dirt here, I don't know if you guys can see it bottom of the screen now that I'm paused. They prep it with a mini cement roller, like a remote control cement truck, and a steamroller, <laughs> and it just steamrolls the track. That's how they prep these tracks because it's so tacky. It's unbelievable that like they don't even need to bring machines out. They just, they just steamroll it flat. So the amount of traction is insane. It's like you're riding on glue. So you can see it when he comes out of that turn, he just gets a ridiculous amount of traction. And that's all the guy in the KTM's fault, I would guess. I mean, he was just going way faster than both of those guys. We're gonna give that a, we're gonna give that a six, six point seven. Whoa. I would have been, I would have been mad if I was one of the other guys in that situation. Wait, it was definitely a guy's fault who crashed. Oh, he should have just been more aware. Yeah, it doesn't look like the other guys cross jumped by any means. He was just kind of minding his own business, and that guy just flew right into the back of him. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'd blame that on the KTM guy, I guess. All right, moving on to the next one here. The, oh, my. Oh. Oh, we got two angles? Oh. <gasps> okay, well, I mean, pretty much worst case scenario in every single aspect. The bike got him, and it got him hard. He didn't eject. Oh, my God. I haven't seen this one either. Oh my God, yep, another situation of jump, right? Here, when you go, oh boy, wow, I screwed up. Throw the bike, jump out in front of it. There's a sand pit in front of it. Okay, so, and I'll tell you guys what went wrong here, right from the beginning, right here. Bike setup, not ideal, completely, <laughs> completely bottomed out, but he's a heavy dude, so that's gonna happen. You need to get in the pocket. I don't know what how he was expecting to skim that, and like as if he was hitting a dragon's back, you, he should have got a shovel, done something to kind of like just get rid of that G out completely. But if, if the G out's going to be there, you have to get in the pocket and accelerate hard. If he tried to skim like that, unless you have a super cross setup bike, which is really stiff suspension front and rear to where you can stay in the stroke, that's not going to work. Let, let's watch this from the beginning. Did he think he could double it? No, 100% no. And he lets his knees blow too far forward. I think he was just getting antsy with it. Just He had two people film. Think about that. He not only did he have a camera here, he knew he had two camera angles. So that's when you got to turn it up. And yeah, knees too far forward, going way too fast. Oh, and just should have jumped, but didn't. Stayed on the bike. That's how you break a femur. Seems like he was okay, though. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to give that a 9.7. That's just a, that was something else. All right, on to the next one. Oh, my favorite trick is the Superman, but this must be a flip involved. Oh no, it's not. Oh my God, that I gotta learn how to do that. Who is this, Josh Sheehan? Funny story, when I went to Australia, I rode at Josh Sheehan's property at his farm and he gifted me because my boots were so beat up at the time before I was sponsored by Fox. He gifted me a set of his Tech 10s, and he said, hey, these are lucky, mate. Just take care of them. I'm like, oh, why, why? Like, what are they lucky for? There was triple flip boot boots from when he did the triple flip at Pastrana's house. So that's a cool story. And now I'm going to have to learn this trick. That's hilarious. I could totally do that, too. <laughs> oh, my God. Yep. Okay. R remind me, Ryan. When we go to the track next, I'm doing that. So break it down. 9-9. Uh, nine, nine. Nine nine, probably way harder to do than it looked. Let me play it one more time because a Superman to get a Superman back. Now what he did is he, he has his flip bars, which unless they weren't pulled out, or maybe they, 
Are his flip bars out in any way? So you can use the flip bars on your uh, upper part of your wrist to pull yourself back from a Superman, whether you're upside down or upright. And it looks like that's what he did right there. Because otherwise, the Superman for me is throwing my legs out as hard as I can, and then they get, f they just get the force will actually bring them back. With him floating above the seat like that, it seems like it would have been hard to bring that back. Like I, I bet you when I go to do that, I might, I very well, might not get my feet back on the pegs in time. Okay, moving on to the next one, the thumbnail here. It, it looks like just a giant crater, so that couldn't be good. Oh, he's going to endo straight to his face. There's no way, no other way about it. And worse than I even expected it was going to be. Oh, my God. He's lucky he didn't drown. Okay. Well, two things here. One, d probably don't do that. It just doesn't even look like it's a puddle. It looks like it's a mud hole. So, like, what's the win here? I don't, I don't know. Because either way, even if you grease the downside into it, you're going to stick when you get down there. Uh, but basically two options one either you can try to jump it and land on your back tire which would probably not work or get both tires to stay on the ground and stay in that sweet spot and not just halfway to, like this guy oh my he got so lucky yeah let me pause it right at the end see what he had after the fact here honestly i don't see how what i don't see how he was riding out of that no matter what I'm going to give that a 9-9, just for luck, because he looks like he's totally fine. I mean, uh, and there were, didn't even seem like urgency from anybody around to go save him. <laughs> Nobody even reacted. Oh, my God. Oh, I know this thumbnail. This is Malcolm Stewart. I remember seeing this and being completely mind blown with what I just saw. So that's Malcolm Stewart scrubbing on the left side. He scrubs him big time there to get up next to him. Oh. Wow. I mean, they were both okay. And I don't know how. I don't know what happened to the other guy and how he hit the ground. But it seemed like it was going to be worse for him. This is Malcolm's fault, obviously, because the other guy's just minding his own business. And you could tell by the way he's straight airing this jump that he's not nearly the level of rider that Malcolm is. Uh and it looks like a fairly narrow jump. And not to mention when you're a higher level guy, I'd never trust the lower level guy that's next to you because you just don't know if they're going to drift left, if they're going to not jump it at all. I mean, look at this pause. He is so high up in the air and doing a front, still doing a front flip. Talk about jump, jump. He's on the bike and it's like this. Still now, now he just now decides, oh, maybe I'm not going to land on my wheels. Yeah, I mean. Oh. Holy cow. So, if I, all right, let's, let me tell you what I would do. If I was Malcolm, right here, jumping. Would have already jumped. As soon as my back tire hit his bike and it started flying back the other way that fast, I was jumping. Now, other guy. I'm the guy straight airing, minding my own business, and jumping. Oh, my. Yeah. Uh, just what a crazy incident. I'm going to, that's, that's a 9-6. Still want to ride at that place, Stewart Compound. All right, moving to the next one. Oh, you, you always, let me pause it. You always know it's going to be a good clip when it's some type of janky indoor arena cross, super cross situation. Uh, and now that I've paused it, this guy's still in the gate. Everybody else is gone. I can't wait to see what happens. Oh. Oh, it looked like he was being so patient with it and like, okay, like, let's let everybody else go. Let's do our thing and looped out. Yeah, this guy was so calculated with everything and then just forgot that the clutch wasn't completely disengaged yet. So what this is, is a prime example of, usually it's my younger students that do this. It is letting the clutch out slowly, slowly, slowly. And then when it starts to grab, oh, I'm just going to let it out completely. For some reason, people feel the need to do that. When I say let the clutch out slowly, that doesn't mean let it out slowly until it begins to grab and then dump it. That means when it begins to grab, then that's when it counts. Let it out slowly from that point. So it looks like he was like super calculated, feeding that clutch out, feeding that clutch out, like wasn't really going yet. And then he's like, well, we're just gonna let go of the whole thing. And there's two things that happen when you do that. One, either you stall or you 
wheelie over backwards. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give that a 9.9 .9. just for the finesse, just for the finesse. There you have it, guys. Let us know what you think. Reaction video with a little bit of analyzation tossed in there so you can learn and try to not be like these people that ended up on their heads. If you guys want training online, you want the best training online, go to club.themotoacademy.com. If you want your videos to be featured on our channel, definitely go to club.themotoacademy.com. Get in the app, send us your footage, good or bad. We'll only make you better. And we'll just make fun of you maybe a tiny bit. We'll help you more than we'll make fun of you, I promise. Okay, well, uh, see you next video. Subscribe. Toodaloo.